So picture this, it's the 1920s, the Soviet Union is 5 minutes old and it's already falling apart. The peasants are starving, the cities are in chaos and half of the leadership thinks electricity is a bourgeois myth. And amid all of this glorious collapse, someone says, hey, what if we made ape-human hybrids? Because when your workers are dropping dead in coal mines and your revolution is on life support, the obvious solution is monkey science. And not just any monkey science, we are talking state-sponsored experiments to breed a new species, stylish, obedient, muscular, emotional, eight people who never question authorities and definitely don't ask annoying things like, can I eat today? This is not a sci-fi movie, this is Soviet science. The mastermind, or madman, depending on how many brain cells you lost reading Soviet history, was Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov. He was a biologist, a pioneer, a man whose resume reads like an origin story for a B-list supervillain. Ivanov had already made a name for himself in the exciting world of horse insemination, which while not glamorous was apparently enough to get you state funding from the USSR. He figured out how to breed hundreds of mares using a single stallion's, well let's call it donation. Look at my horse, my horse is amazing, give it a leg. Thus revolutionizing livestock production and reducing the number of Ockers Boniard state by roughly 99%. That's truly a hero of the proletariat, the man industrialized or sex. If that's not a hero of the Soviet Union award, I don't know what is. But like all the great men, Ivanov was not satisfied with turbocharging horse breeding. No, that was baby science. He wanted to level up his dream, cross a human with an ape. Why? Because, well, reasons. Now, we can speculate about those reasons, but probably because of Darwin, atheism, industrial labor and all of those new Soviet man ideology that was going around at that time. So he pitched the idea to the Soviet Academy like it was a totally normal thing. Like, comrades, what if we create a new species, stronger than a man, dumber than a man, cheaper than a man, and loyal to the state in the only way a banana-motivated ape man can be? The official goal was pure Soviet efficiency and obedient, tireless humanoid workforce that wouldn't unionize, wouldn't get religious, and wouldn't stop in the middle of a real construction to ask pesky philosophical questions like is this suffering? These creatures wouldn't have a soul, or thoughts, or annoying families to feed. They just exist to live heavy things, dig big holes, and possibly march into war if given the pointy stick and some light encouragement. So it was the perfect worker. Strong as an ox, quiet as a corpse, possibly even cheaper to feed. Bananas were likely more plentiful than bread at the time, and if not, well, the USSR already had a practice making living things survive on, well, nothing. This wasn't a fringe idea. It wasn't whispered in some vodka-fueled basement lab by guy wearing a tin foil ushanka. This was state signed, funded, approved, signed off by actual institutions. Because if there is one thing totalitarian regimes are great at, it's confusing progress with why the hell would you do that? So the plan was simple. Take the bold new frontier of artificial insemination, aim it at a species barrier and see what sticks. Ivano genuinely believed that this could work. Not only that, that it could be useful. Imagine a factory is full of hair covered emotional gorilla men shoveling coal into fires of progress while the real humans get to sit around writing poems about tractors and denouncing their parents. In 1925, the Soviet Academy gave Ivanov the green light. And by green light we mean actually funding around $10,000 which in today's money is roughly enough to buy a small house or bribe an entire city council. They told him to pack his bags and head to the French Guinea, a French colony in West Africa that has two things that Ivanov needed the most, chimpanzees and no functioning ethics board. Ivanov never want to turn down a weird science vocation, brought along his adult son. Because what's better father-son bonding activity than trying to make monkey people? They arrived in Conakry in the early 1926, armed with syringes, ambition and casual disregard for everything holy. The plan was officially inseminate female chimpanzees with human sperm. Step 2, well that's question mark. Step 3, that's profit, in the form of mutant labor. Ivanov figured it's just a numbers game. Inject enough chimpanzees with enough material and one of them was bound to spit out a miracle or at least spit out something. Unfortunately for Ilya, there was a snack. The chimps he was supposed to use were juveniles, meaning too young to reproduce. <laughs> 
So in the classic Soviet style, Ivanov improvised, and he and his son turned into a low-budget Indiana Jones, tromping through the jungle with nets trying to capture wild adult chimps like it was the world's weirdest Pokemon spin-off. Eventually they got 13 chimps, 3 were inseminated, none got pregnant of course, so not a single ape gave birth to the glorious Soviet monkey proletariat. The rest just sat around eating fruit and judging Ivanov with their eyes. So Ivanov, clearly a man who learned all the wrong lessons from this failure, decided to flip the experiments. If apes wouldn't carry a human seed, maybe humans could carry ape seed, you know, for science. According to his surviving letters, Ivanov actually proposed inseminating local African women with chimpanzee sperm. The women, he claimed, would be told they are receiving medical treatment. Shockingly, the French colonial governor was not on board with turning his colony into a living freak show, so he shut down, Ivanov was forced to leave, with zero results, and a growing reputation as the world's most cursed veterinarian. Back in the USSR, Ivanov licked his wounds and started plotting round two. West Africa hadn't panned out. But hope springs eternal when your entire career is based on the belief that man plus monkey equals progress. So he pitched a new idea. Why not just do the experiment here, at home? No colonial red tape, no French governors to stop him, just pure streamlined Marxist-Leninist ethics. The authorities agreed again. Because the one thing more consistent than Soviet failure was Soviet funding for bad ideas. Ivanov was assigned to the Suhumi Primate Center in Abkhazia, which was basically a Soviet monkey resort where apes lunged around, ate fruit and occasionally got taken into science. Ivanov's new plan was simple. Instead of inseminating chimps with human stuff, he'd flip the script and tried to put ape sperm into human women. Totally normal, very rational, definitely not one failed experiment away from writing manifest in the Gulag system. He started reaching out to doctors and hospitals, asking if they knew any women who might be interested in a new bold scientific opportunity, which is Soviet for, hey, wanna get pregnant with an orangutan juice for Mother Russia. And somehow, and I mean really somehow, he actually found volunteers, real women, five of them, who agreed to be artificially inseminated with orangutan material in the name of science, socialism and feminism. And no, they weren't prisoners, they weren't forced, they signed up. Because that's how bleak things were. Women looked at their lives and thought, you know what, maybe being a mother of a monkey mutant wouldn't be so bad. Ivano even had a donor edit, a healthy male orangutan named Tarzan. But before the insemination could happen, tragedy struck. Tarzan died. Heart failure, reportedly. Maybe stress. Maybe he just heard what Ivano had planned and noped out of existence. Either way, with no male ape and no sperm bag, the whole plan failed. Again. And this time, Ivanov couldn't recover. The scientific community was getting twitchy, the government was getting suspicion. Even in a country that thought farming by astrology was a good idea, people were starting to ask, wait, what exactly is this guy doing with state money and orangutans? And if there is one thing you didn't want in the 1930s in the USSR, it's attention. So in the classic, Stalinistic fashion, Ivanov got purged. Not for the ape stuff, of course, that would make too much sense. No, they charged him with counter-revolutionary activities, which in practice meant you annoyed somebody. Arrested, sentenced to eternal exile in Kazakhstan and dropped off in some dusty nowhere town where he died two years later, probably still wondering why the monkey thing didn't work out. And just like that, Soviet monkey science was over. No hybrids, no labor-saving ape men, no glorious banana-fueled revolution, just a disgraced biologist, five very confused women and a dead orangutan named Tarzan. But the legend didn't die, because this is Soviet history we are talking about. And Soviet history never ends with a full stop. It ends with a rumor, a missing file, or a guy in a trench hole saying, you didn't hear this from me. For decades, whispered persisted that Ivano had succeeded, that somewhere in the caucus in a cage, or in a cave, or in a government basement, there lived a creature, hairy, silent, obedient, half man, half mystery, loyal to the party, born of science, and definitely not unionized. Did it exist? No. But the fact is that someone actually tried creating it, and that's already insane enough, because this is Soviet science, and Soviet science means never having to say this was a bad idea. It means rewriting the laws of biology with vodka and optimism. It means turning ideology into anatomy, and then blaming the West when it explodes. It means filing in the report that says, minor setback when your lab assistant is getting mauled by a gorilla. And it means dying alone in a shack in Kazakhstan, because Stalin heard the rumor that you once asked a question.
But here's the thing, in a weird, profoundly disturbing way, Ivano was ahead of his time. Today, you try mixing human DNA with ape DNA, you're just another guy with a podcast, a Patreon, and a court order. But Ivanov, he did it with government funding, a dead orangutan, and the kind of delusional confidence you can only get when your nation has banned reality. This man wasn't a fringe, he was the main character in a government-funded origin story for Planet of the Apes, the Bolshevik edition. And let's be honest, if he succeeded, if even one chimp have coughed up a little half-man, half-monkey bundle of socialist joy, the USSR would have mass-produced those things like tractors. There would be statues, posters, commemorative stamps. Whole generations of Soviet children raised by government issues monkey nannies. And you better believe some unlucky gorilla would have ended up in the Politburo. So next time someone says science has gone too far, just remember it hasn't gone nearly far enough. We could have had eight men building railroads in Siberia, arguing about the electrical materialism and the Ending extra bananas for hitting their five-year plan quotas. But instead, we got first.